I've been so excited about this series that we've been doing, uh, When Heaven Won. We started it uh, March 31st, and so this is the, uh, the third message in this really uh, incredible series. And uh, today, the title of my message is, Who You Really Are. Someone say this, I am a child of God. A number of years ago, I was traveling with my mother in Sweden, and my mom, if you guys do not know, she has spoken all over the world in South Africa, to uh, Sweden, all over Europe, all over the United States, hundreds of different churches. So when I was growing up, I did a lot of traveling because my, my parents, my father, who's watching right now, uh, was a pastor, public speaker, obviously my Uncle Tim. And so I grew up going to a lot of events because, hey, everyone was a speaker. And uh, I remember we were at this one church in Stockholm, Sweden, and it was, it was cool just to be able to see my family in action and then to essentially be given the privilege of having a legacy of that. And we were in, in Sweden, and my mom was speaking at this conference, and there was a lady in the back row, I'll never forget it, when she walked in the room, you just knew she was special. Have you ever seen someone? It's like, it's like have you ever met somebody or been at a restaurant, and you go, I'm pretty sure that person's famous. I don't know what show they're in, because there's 900 million TV shows now. Or, I, 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 don't know, I don't know if I've seen them on Instagram, but have you ever like, seen someone and you just knew they were someone special? It's interesting, right? You don't even have to know the person, but you can tell that they're famous or that they're successful. They just have a way about them. And so I remember this lady who sat in the back, and the minute she came in to this conference, you just knew Again, I had never seen her before, uh, but I just knew the lady was special. Her cadence, the way that she carried herself, the way that people engaged with her was super interesting. Uh, the people around her, she had like three assistants, but they were all inc incognito. And so everywhere she went, there was like three people that followed her. And, uh, and you could just tell that there was something special about her. Later uh, that week, I found out that she was actually an ambassador which was so interesting. And so she invited us to her house. She was an ambassador for South Africa, and she was the ambassador for South Africa in Sweden. And so she had invited us to have lunch with her and her whole staff, and it was a crazy big house on a lake with the big old South African flag. And uh, so I remember we went there, and, and we were on the way back to our hotel, and I, I, I asked my mom, I said, this, this is a crazy, like, she knows, it, it's, like, it's like you could just tell she was an ambassador without meeting her. And my mom said something interesting. She said, it's because she knows who she is. I think so often in life, we come into faith. So we encounter God. We learn about God. We give our lives to the Lord. We see the goodness of God. We believe the things about God, but in our faith, we don't always discover who we really are in Him. It's like we have, it's like the woman who's the ambassador is that it, it's, we've become members of the body of Christ, but in our minds, we still think of ourselves as the person before God. Who's ever been there? And so... I want to read this verse. This is uh, Matthew 16, 7 through 18, and, and it's uh, Jesus interacting with Peter. And what I love about Peter and Jesus is Peter's the everyman. He really represents all of us. I feel like every time I read him talking to Jesus, a little part of me sees myself in it. Am I the only one? It's, he's, he kind of represents all of us, and he's talking to Jesus, and Jesus replies. He says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, 
And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. One of the most amazing things about the New Testament is after the disciples said yes to Jesus, it's three years of Jesus trying to show his disciples who they are in him. That's most of the dialogue. It isn't just stories of Jesus teaching. It's stories of Jesus a little frustrated or teaching in like a practical way his disciples to really recognize who they are in him. That they are children of God, that they are citizens of heaven, that when they show up somewhere, God shows up with them, that they're not playing for any team, they're playing for God's team. And so you see this with Peter is, Peter's a true believer. He believes it, that Jesus is the Messiah, but he's stuck in fisherman mode the whole time. He can't make the transition. Every time he goes through something, he kind of defaults back to a previous version of himself, the version of himself before Jesus. And so I love this verse because Jesus is telling Peter, he's saying, on this rock, I will build my church. You see, it's the confession of your faith, the reality of Christ that does the heavy lifting in your life. That's why you don't have to have it all together. One of the things that we say at this church, a lot of churches say this, is that God does not call the equipped, he equips the called. Well, what do I mean by that, Pastor Stefan? It's that when you said yes to Jesus, you were just you. There's a great quote I love, that we are the sum total of everyone who loved us. So often in life, it's like we just pop out and we just like believe what everyone has said about us. And so it's like what our parents said about us, we believe. What neighbors said about us, we believe. What, what people around us have said about us, we believe. But when we come to know the Lord, God has a very different vision of who we are. And we discover that through our faith in Jesus. Simon, you are not a fisherman. You are actually the rock. You are not just a mother or a father. You're the person in your family that God is going to change your children's children's through. You're not just a college kid. You're the future of your family. You're not just a spectator. You're a participator and even a leader. Give the Lord a clap for that. And so often, we, and we talked about this the last few weeks, is that so often we come to faith, we encounter the resurrection, we experience all the things that God has said, but resurrection is the door and faith is the house. And so when we decide to live resurrection-shaped lives, what happens is the pieces of us that were there before Jesus begin to burn off. And the true pieces of who we really are in him begin to come out. And I want to read this. And my second point is that you are a child of God. John 1, 12 through 13 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. You were born of God. And because of that, you have a special position in the world. I remember when I was a kid, and um, we went to, I went to a Clipper game, and uh, I love sports. I love going to sports games. I'm more of a sports game guy than a watch seven hours of baseball kind of guy. That's like... Invite me to a game, I'm there, I'm standing up, 
Invite me to a watch party of that game. You better call me for something else because we're not hanging out for like two years. So I remember I love games and, and so I grew up going to a lot of games. And I remember the first time I got to like sit in a VIP section. It was Staples Center. They had just built it. And it was like the third game. I think it was the Clipper game. And so my uncle Tim took me and my cousin Isaiah uh, to this game. And VIP was like a wild experience. Like being nine and there's a waiter with an unlimited supply of popcorn and Coke and hot dogs. Come on, somebody. I was living the blessed life. Once you go back, you can, I mean, you can't, like, once you do something fancy, like first class or VIP, right, or you go to, like, Nordstrom's in Fashion Island, it is tough to go back to Ross. Is this just me? Like, it's a tough, it is a tough thing to do. I remember it was, it was wild. I, I, I was like on cloud nine. Literally, I remember I sat down in the VIP section, and it was the special seats where it was like a table. And we sat there, and everyone was waiting in the concession line, but we had a waiter. It was nuts. <laughs> it was then and there I realized who I was really going to be. Come on. Who's <laughs> ever been that, like, it was ridiculous. And so... I remember that VIP experience, and, and it was so cool to have like a position. There was a side entrance. People were nice to you when they check your ticket. It was almost like they wanted you to be there. It was crazy, because usually it's not like that when you go to a lot of events, right? They always look at you like you're in the way. <laughs> and, and so it was such a cool experience. And, and what it taught me was that there is something about knowing who you are. And we learn who we are through how people treat us. And so when we come to know God, he begins to treat us not as our sins deserve, but he treats us the way he really sees us. And so it's kind of like that VIP experience, is that when we say yes to Jesus, and you begin to know him and know his ways and live by his ways and take what God is saying seriously and take the presence of the Holy Spirit seriously, it'll change you. You begin to realize who you are in him. One of the coolest things about being a pastor is you get to pastor people of every age. And I love it whenever there's like a crisis or people are dealing with things or right, there's something big in culture. You can always count on the folks that have known God for 40 years not to care. <laughs> they are like rocks because they have been through it all, and Jesus was there. So they know who they are in God. There is no convincing. Have you ever, have you ever noticed this? Some people, it's like you cannot convince them of anything. Like they know who they are. They know where they like to sit. They know where they like to eat. They are who they are. And they know it. I want to be that way. I want to be so full of faith in God that no one can take that out of me. I want to be so full of his love, so full of his peace, to know his mercy so deeply and intimately that Everything around me could fall apart, and I would still be secure in who I am in him. If you don't clap for that. And I want to read this. This is Philippians 3.20. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as Savior. One of the coolest things about meeting that ambassador was the way that she moved. It, and you could just tell. It was like everywhere she went, she did not walk alone. She brought South Africa with her. Like even when we went to the house where she lived, it was like a South African house. There was a guard with a gate. When we went past the embassy, even though we were in Sweden... The embassy was South African. For those of you who do not know, that's how it works. If an embassy is built somewhere, regardless of where it's built in the world, the ground that embassy is built on, 
belongs to the nation who has that embassy. So even though you're in Sweden, if you're on that embassy, the laws of South Africa apply. And so she, this woman had diplomatic status. And so everywhere she went, she wasn't like a regular citizen. Like people had to engage with her like she was a representative of South Africa. And so that's how it is for us when we come into faith. Paul says that we are citizens of heaven. Well, what does that mean, Pastor Stefan? That means that everywhere you go, you bring heaven with you. But it's not just you bring it like you bring something to a party. Everywhere you go, you expand the border of heaven. That's why we say that you are an ambassador of Christ. I used to hear that all the time when I was young. Usually it just meant, like, don't do something dumb when you're like 10, right? I heard that a lot. Stefan, you are an ambassador of Christ. You got to be good in school. And there's a part of that that, of course, is true, but there's a deeper meaning in that image, is that wherever you go, you bring heaven with you. You expand the boundary of heaven. You expand the place on earth that the presence of God dwells. Scripture is so clear about this. That it says that God has made his home in his people. And so we are his people. And so the place on earth where God's presence is, where God has made his home in, is his people. And so that's why we are ambassadors. We, everywhere we move, when we pray, we're not just praying ourselves. Jesus is present in the prayer. When we speak life into someone, it's not just you speaking life into someone. Jesus is speaking life into someone through you. When you're the peace in someone's family, when you show up and you roll into a household and you're the peacemaker, Jesus is making peace in and through you. There's a lot of ways that God could have decided how to organize everything. And the way he decided to do it was through his people. And what's so cool about that is that we get to share in God's kingdom work. Because that's how God does it. He sees a family, and he says, I want to bring the presence of God in that family. And then he'll begin to surround that family with ambassadors of him. He looks at a city, and he sees a city and said, there's a lot of people who are lost in that city. There's a lot of folks that are broken in that city. How do I touch them? He sends in his people. We come into a city, and we pray, and we serve, and we are generous, and we live the life of heaven on earth. Amen? And that's why, as citizens of heaven, we are called to live a life of so much purpose. When you know who you are, and you're convicted about who you are, you have purpose. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that the people perish where they have no vision. I think so often in life where many people struggle is it's on that purpose side. It's like they were never told they had a purpose. They've heard the concept of purpose. They've been to the conference where someone talked about purpose. They've even, they've read it on Instagram that we all have a purpose, I'm living my purpose, but they have a really poor definition of what that is. And so you have a lot of folks that are kind of confused about it. They think that their career is their purpose. I hear a lot of that. It's like, my purpose is to build a company in real estate. Or like they think that a role they play in their relationship is a purpose. Or, or they, they see themselves as, as being a part of a political party or being involved as their purpose. All of those things are purposes. But your purpose as a person of God is to be a citizen of heaven. That's your foundational purpose that affects all other purposes. 
And that's why when you see someone who has a real revelation of who they are in God, it elevates all the other parts of their life that they are committed to. It elevates them as a parent. It elevates them as a business owner. It elevates them in the marketplace as a leader, as a member of a family. Because all those purposes are built on the purpose to be a citizen of heaven. Does that make sense? And so it's a powerful thing to see somebody who knows their true purpose. It's tough to see someone who lacks purpose. I feel like we all know folks that struggle in that area as a young person. Um, you know, I need to stop saying this. I've been thinking about this a lot, Pastor Page. I'm 35. I ain't, I'm really not that young. I was at a conference speaking at Thrive, and I, I, I talked to someone as, like, the youngest speaker, and then I was like, I'm not the youngest speaker. There's, like, two other speakers that are 25 doing announcements. <laughs> but there's something really interesting when you see a, a, a person who lacks purpose in their life. It's like, it's like you can just tell that there's something missing. It's their behaviors for better or for worse, seem like they're discounted or not aligned with their potential. And so that's a real thing. And so what it means to be a citizen of heaven is to know your potential in him. I love this verse, Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Break that down, Pastor Stefan. The first is we. That's you and me. That's the church. We have been made. We are God's handy work. If he is the potter, then we are the clay. I love um, uh, trade shows. When I was younger, I... I what was that traveling road show where you have people who are trying to sell things? Antique road show. Great show, right? And I would watch it like crazy. For those of you who do not know, the Antique Road Show is the show where people um, buy and sell old things. And sometimes those things are worth like a million dollars, and other times the person thinks they're worth a million, and they're worth like a dollar. And so it's a very interesting show. And But one of the cool things about that show is that you – Discover the art of craftsmanship, because that's kind of lost in our society today. We live in just an advanced economy where everything is produced en masse. So we don't really have this idea of craftsmanship. But it says that we are God's handiwork. He is the craftsman. And so if that's true, our lives reflect the work of God. Think about that. You want to prove the existence of God? Tell your story. That's why testimony is so powerful. I can tell you this as someone who spent a lot of time in the academy. No one wants to hear a theory when they're going through it. What they want to hear is how God came into your life. Do you want to know if God's real? I can show you 200 people that have been touched by him who discovered who they are, who were shaped by his presence, who discovered love for the first time, who experienced peace in a way they never was taught it as a kid. We are his handy work. I love this. Created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance to do, if the worship team could come up. To do means to do something for a purpose. I believe that everything God does in our lives is purposeful. We say this a lot at this church. We say that when God redeems us, 
He didn't just redeem us from the world. He redeemed us for the world. God healed you because there's someone around you. Maybe you know that person or maybe you haven't met that person yet. That he plans to use you to dispense that healing grace. You are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good work. Amen. Can we get the sound for them? That would be amazing. You know, one of the coolest things about faith is that it's a journey. There's a discovery quality to God. And this is really what this series is about. When heaven won, don't laugh. You're going to make me laugh. There is something so special in the discovery of who you are. I was looking at photos of friends of mine and family members recently because my wife bought a uh, new piece of furniture. And so we had to fill it with photos. And it was cool seeing five years back, 10 years back, 20 years back, we had photos of our parents on it. And what I saw in that was that as time goes by, God's faithfulness is revealed. So often we want everything now. And who can blame us? We're just people of our time. We want love now. We want the peace now. We want the restoration now. We want the healing now. But so often, what happens is we go through life and then we look back and we, we don't even realize that we transitioned over into peace. Or that we discovered love. Because love is faithful. You can have an encounter of love, but there's also the kind of love that stays with you for 40 years. I heard a writer once, he said, I cannot truly tell my wife that I love her until we're 80 years old. He goes, because I'm going to prove it to her over 40 years. How beautiful is that? But that's really the love of God. That's how it works. Is that it's unlimited love. It's love today and tomorrow and next week in two years in 10 years. It's the kind of love that will remind you when you forget who you are. The, the kind of love that will take you when you're down and just bring you back up. And so my message today for anyone in this room who is struggling to remember who they are, you are a citizen of heaven. Even when you don't feel like it, you are a child of God. You are ahead and not behind. You are above and not beneath. You are His handy work. And the story of your life is going to prove His existence and His divine touch on earth. I'm done speaking. Let's give the Lord a clap.